An RV expert witness shares his experience evaluating RVs for court cases next. I got the feeling that this coach has been in a wreck. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I have been RVing since the 80s and I have been doing a bunch of videos about the good and bad in the RV industry. You may have seen a recent video I did with Stick Bogart. He talked about RVs from a salesperson standpoint and gave some very important RV shopping tips. Today he is back to share his experience working with lawyers as an RV expert witness. He also passes along some very valuable RV RV shopping and safety tips. When I first started getting into this, I had gotten a job at an RV dealership. It was a car dealership, and then they added a small RV dealership, which got very big over the period of a few years. They were taking coaches in that people shouldn't be buying. Nobody had checked them out. I've always been mechanically inclined. If you see my toolbox, you'd be blown away. I told them, I said, look, you could be buying a box of dilapidated crap, and then you're going to put that on the lot? No. You can soil your reputation in a very short period of time if you're selling junk. Let me go through them. The customer brings the coach to the dealership. I do a free pre-delivery inspection of the coach and let the coach owner and the dealership know everything out in the open. I had bought me a Ford pickup truck and I put a utility box on the back of it. So I had developed this great service truck. I learned how to understand LP gas system. I taught myself the expansion rate, everything about it. I knew what I was doing with that. I was able to start a generator and make sure that it's properly producing the amount of electricity, checking the load, does it have the ability to run the refrigerator, running the air conditioner, plugging receptacle testers in, making sure everything works, filling the septic tank full of water, filling the fresh water tank and the gray water tank full of water and running the system, checking it to make sure there's no water leaks anywhere. And then I got a garden hose with big sprayer, big sprayer because they use it to wash the vehicles that they were selling. So I go up and I would test the coach, spray water around the base of the air conditioning unit to make sure it's not leaking water inside the coach. So when I got done, I knew everything about that coach. Then I could give my presentation to the customer that's trading it in and the dealer, and now they know what's got to be done. Because somebody could be trading a coach in and not even know if there's anything, there might be something wrong with it that they don't even know about. And other RV dealerships weren't doing that. Then when I moved out to Arizona, there was an attorney local here that wanted me to work on something for him. And he says, well, I've got a, a case here regarding an RV. He says, I don't even know where to begin. And he said, well, the customer bought a coach that was brand new. And they've been having all these problems with it. They basically are trying to get their money back and get out of the deal. I noticed that the coach, a lot of the complaints were focusing on the front end of the coach. The windshield leaks, the seams of the face of the motorhome weren't properly sealed like the rest of the coach, like somebody other than the manufacturer had their hands on it. I got the feeling that this coach has been in a wreck. And I said, can you do me a favor? Can you subpoena all the documents between the dealer and the manufacturer? Everything. I want everything. And I also want, because uh, I had a real goose feeling about something, so I threw this on the table as well. I said, I want you to get me the documents between the manufacturer and any third-party repair center in that state of Indiana. So we found out that the coach had been wrecked on the lot. Somebody had backed another coach and smashed the whatever out of it. Instead of fixing it themselves, the dealer, they didn't want their fingers on it because it was supposedly new. They put it on a low boy trailer and trucked it all the way to Elkhart, Indiana. Well, the manufacturer supplied a third party repair center, all the parts needed, and the third party repaired it and then they brought it back to the state of Arizona. Well, that means that there's no records in the state of Arizona of this coach ever being in a wreck. The attorney that I worked for on this case, he says, you were right on target with everything. Needless to say, they won. Now, this case was an RV rental company. So the attorney said, I need you to go out with your tools, and I want you to do a complete safety check of that coach. He says, I feel it should have never been rented. It's unfit for people to be living in. So I go there. Now, I'm not talking to the attorney that represents the rental company. I'm only talking to the attorney that hired me to come out and do it. The rental company attorney was off to the side. And the first thing I'm going to go to 
is the LP gas. I want people to see this. This is why I lit this candle. This candle here, inside a coach, if there's an LP gas leak, this candle, as small as it is, could literally destroy and blow apart your motorhome. There will be nothing to salvage if there's a massive or LP gas leak and it builds up and builds up and builds up. All it takes is a light of a candle. A simple small spark could blow it apart. So what I did was I turned the gas on. I made before I did though, I made sure everything was turned off inside. Kind of smelled something a little bit. So I went inside and what you do with this device here, you've opened up your cooktop, your three burners. Well, I take one of those burners out and then I hook this up to where that burner was connected to. And I open that valve. Now I'm monitoring the pressure. I went in and I got a lighter and lit one of the burners. And I watched the gauge and it dropped from the 11 inches of water column, it dropped rapidly. It's leaking. It's leaking right at the regulator. So fortunately for this situation, the LP gas was leaking on the outside of the coach. I lit the furnace off and it would just barely light because the regulator was so bad. It would just barely light. But it was also leaking carbon monoxide inside the coach. Okay, we know coaches get cracks from stress and bouncing all over the place. If the fire chamber in the furnace gets a crack in it, What's going to happen is the carbon monoxide is not going to go outside of the coach on the side of the coach to the exhaust system. Some of it, a percentage of it, is going to get leaked inside the coach. Get yourself a carbon monoxide tester for the side of the coach. If it doesn't have one, get one. Put it closer to the furnace area where that kind of stuff can go wrong. If there's a leak from the furnace, you're going to get an early warning. Time to get out. Something's wrong. Get out. Shut the gas off. But the attorney that represented the rental company was there listening because I made sure I said this stuff loud enough that what this guy could hear. There's a massive gas leak in this coach. I left. About an hour later, the attorney that hired me called me and said that he wants to settle. He says, you did a good job. We've got this case. This lady's going to get paid. Nothing was intention. It was neglect. A coach could kill somebody. It could kill somebody else behind you. When it comes to buying a coach, you people get excited that they find something they want, but you got to stop. Start asking for documentation. Where are all these documents of these pre-delivery inspections, checking things out? It doesn't matter whether you're a dealer or if you are a company that does consignments or if you're a rental company. Where's the inspection of the coach? Where's all these documents at that, that nobody wants to do? And the reason a lot of them don't want to do it is because it takes manpower away from them working on coaches they're going to sell. It could be labor intensive as far as time of going through and making sure everything is correct. People have to get in the mindset that RV coaches, motorhomes, travel trailers, fifth wheels, whatever, and cars on the assembly line are two different types of assembly process. One is precisionally done every time, time and time again. The other ones, like when I built boats, Mondays were the worst boat you wanted to have. Fridays were the worst boat you wanted to buy. Perfection went downhill on Friday and it never got up to par on Monday. So you're going to have a lot more problems with coaches. You have to keep emotions out of this until you start seeing documents that show that that coach is roadworthy for you, your family, and whoever else is behind you. And I say behind you because if the trailer is not properly mounted to that towing vehicle and something breaks loose, somebody behind you could get injured. Houses don't run down the road, and these coaches beat down the road, and they go off of campgrounds and all kinds of stuff, and they're literally shaking apart. People, when you're going to go buy a coach, get excited at the right time. And that's after you own it and you're going on the trip. That's the time to light up the excitement. But when it comes to buying something, people have to understand that these things depreciate fast in value. As soon as you bounce it off the lot, you lose way more money than somebody bounces a car off the lot. A lot more money. Keep your excitement hidden. Personally, I think people should leave their kids at home when they're going out to negotiate to buy something. The adults don't need any distractions of kids and grandkids around when you're doing business and spending thousands of dollars, in some cases a couple hundred thousand dollars for a coach. And you need that long bullet list of everything that's been checked out. Read some of the reviews and some of them you can pretty much tell that that sounds like a legitimate one, especially if it's a complaint of positive ones. You might want to be a little skeptical. Who's writing those reviews? Is it the actual customer or is it employees of the dealership 
Or is it somebody that's being paid to write those reviews? You don't know. But the negative ones, read into them. Look at the pictures if they've posted pictures. There are superior court websites where you can go to look up the company's name and see how many different lawsuits they have. If they're inundated with a whole bunch of cases, be careful. That's definitely a warning light that you might not want your boots on their lot. Start doing your homework before you go to the dealership, not after. Your homework will always save you thousands of dollars and lots of headaches. If you're thinking about buying one, you might even talk to these storage lots where they have RV storage facilities. Some of those places actually have uh, bulletin boards of people that got advertisements on there that are posting, I want to sell my fifth wheel, such and such, call me, you know. And those people are just literally tired of paying the rent. They no longer use it, or maybe their loved one passed away and they just want to be done with it. But you still should pay for an inspection because if you don't, you're going to wish you had paid for an inspection. It's just like if you buy a house, you pay for the home inspector. You're going to live in it, RV or house. You want inspections, safety checks, make sure things are right. Years ago, the houses used to have aluminum wire in them, which would get heated up and cause fires. So what does the coach have? What kind of wires have? They don't have aluminum wire. They have copper wire. But are they properly wired? Are the receptacles wired right? Right. Is there any gas lines rubbing up against something that could cause a leak? It's not just the leak testing. It's also looking at the routing of the plumbing. And is it rubbing against something that could future cause a leak? Anybody could say they're an RV technician just because they got a toolbox. But do they really have the experience and knowledge to be able to check things out properly so everybody inside the coach and outside of the coach are safe with that thing? Because there's a lot that can go wrong with these. And if they don't have these kind of tools like I've got, you need to be skeptical of them. Ask them, what kind of test are you going to do on the LP gas system? And what's involved in the LP gas testing? That's my main mission is to protect people. The tires are very important. I've seen so many people pulling all kinds of trailers. They're going to go do something, a toy hauler or an RV, and they neglect their tires. When you have a blowout and you're on the side of the road and you're changing the tire, somebody turns the phone, guess what's going to happen? They're probably going to hit you. If you're going to be in the campsite, get those tire covers. Get yourself a good, reliable air pressure gauge to monitor the pressure of the tires because if the pressure is low, the tires are going to heat up and then they're going to come apart. And then what are you going to do? You're going to be out there saying, I don't have a spare. Carry one, an extra one with you. And then when you put that one on, go get another one. Don't delay it. Get another one. Be prepared because the other tire is just as old as the one that blew apart. I use TPMS, which is a tire pressure monitoring system. I don't have to go around and check each tire. All I do is I turn the system on and it tells me what the pressure and temperature is on each tire. And it continues to monitor while I'm driving down the road. It's always monitoring the pressure and the temperature of each tire. I don't even have to look at the monitor while I'm driving because an alarm will sound if the tire pressure becomes too low or if the tire temperature becomes too high. Now, if you're a longtime viewer, you remember that at one time I drove my fifth wheel across the Golden Gate Bridge with a flat tire. And that's what led me to get a TPMS. You cannot stop as fast as somebody that's in a pickup truck or a car in front of you. You cannot stop as quick as they can because you got the elephant behind you. So keep your safe following distance. If somebody gets in front of you, create that safe following distance again. You're not in a rush. You're not driving a fire truck. Your lives are in this coach. Most of the people are in the mindset of cutting off somebody and getting in front of somebody that's bigger than they want to. They can't wait to cut you off and get in front of you. Be prepared for those inconsiderate drivers and also invest in some cameras because if something goes wrong you got evidence you're not the one that did it these 18 wheelers that are pulling 80,000 pounds down the road they've got cameras everywhere the people will pass them up and they can't wait to cut them off and then that trucker cannot stop and that's the same thing with rvs have cameras to protect yourself spend the money for safety people will spend a lot of money for fun stuff but they won't spend money for safe stuff don't be afraid to share these videos with other people that might not know about Liz. One of these videos could save one of your friend's lives. Number one. 
Number two, post your comments and say, hey, Stick, I got a question for Stick. You're not gonna get any answers if you don't ask any questions. If you found this video valuable, please like, subscribe, and share. And let me know any questions in the comments you have for me or for Stick. And as always, if RV Life is calling you, I hope you come out here and give it a try.